Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about issue number 16 of Immortal X-Men, written by Kieran Gillen. But before we dive into the story, I want to ask you a favor. If you enjoy this video, please leave a like and a comment to help the channel grow. So with that said, this issue opens with Sebastian Shaw and Celine using an orbiting sentinel to figure out what exactly is going on on the island. So as the two zoom in on the perimeter of Krakoa, they were met by the gruesome remains of the Orcus unit that was sent to the island. Because as we have seen in the previous issues, since the Hellfire Gala, Shaw has been sending out strike teams to secure the island, but as we all know, they failed in a miserable fashion. In fact, it was so miserable that Shaw firmly believed that they may have pushed Charles too far. So with that shocking revelation, Shaw and Selene quickly made their way to Shaw's Industries, where the two entered his massive vault, the same vault where Shaw keeps all his precious belongings. And on a side note, Shaw states that this vault actually keeps something that he never expects to use, unless he had to, which makes me believe it could be a way to regain his ex-gene if he ever needed it. But see, that is just a guess, so down in the comments below, let me know what you think could be hidden away in Shaw's special vault. But anyway, whatever that secret item is, it doesn't really play a part in this issue, because Shaw had his mind made up for a situation like this. And that was to use his custom Hellfire armor, which was designed by himself and commissioned to be built for whenever he needed it. So with the armor in hand, Selene asks a question that makes a whole lot of sense. She asks why don't they just send out the Stark Sentinels onto the island to clear any threat. To which Shaw responds by saying, that is exactly what Orcus wants him to do, they want him to rely on them. But see, Shaw wants to rely on no one but himself, for he wants to mine Krakoa for all its resources without running the risk of losing anything of value in the process of squashing a bug like Charles. So as Shaw entered his suit of armor, he suggested that Selene use one of his psychic blockers to help get an upper hand in their fight to come. So speaking of the battle to come, on the very next page, we jump right into it with Shaw Carpet bombing the coastline as Charles takes off for a better vantage point. Now with that battle playing out, we transition over to a person who resembles Apocalypse giving a dialogue saying, murder, death, anguish, and a time of testing. Now he is not our Apocalypse as we know him, he is something more grander, he feels like he is something the real Apocalypse would approve of, because he is here for a purpose dear to him. This imposter is here to test the mutants on the road to Revelation. Then he goes on to say that, eventually, they will understand. Now they are all mutants, but some are members of the X-Men who spent their time enduring a danger room. But despite whether the mutant is a member of the X-Men or not, they all have found themselves in the most dangerous room of all, and unfortunately, according to this apocalypse, they will not survive the experience. So with that declaration out there, we skip over to Nowhere No One with Egg, one of the members of the Five, fighting against the squad of bishops while Exodus and Hope Summers attempt to save him. Now this is a big deal, considering prior to this issue, the Five were considered missing in action, so when it comes down to people who need to be saved, Egg was high on the list. So with that said, Exodus wastes no time in scooping him right up and getting him out of there. But right before he was able to clear all threats, one of the feral wolverines emerged from the sand in an attempt to cut them down, but before it could do so, Hope was able to intercept him and stop him in its tracks. Now with the wolverine lookalike cut in half and the squad of bishops contained, Hope makes a one-off comment saying how the look in this wolverine eyes looked all too familiar, and the bishops unfortunately bring up memories of the time he tried to kill her which, later in this issue, would play a significant part in determining where they are currently at. So with them clear of danger, Hope tells Egg that he was the last member of the Five that was needed to restart the resurrection process again, which was exactly what they did, because almost immediately on the next page, we see a mutant emerging from an egg as the people cheered. So with the status quo back in place, Exodus, Hope Summer, and Destiny have a conversation with Mother Righteousness, and during this interaction, Hope breaks the number one rule in thanking the Mother. Now the reason why this is bad is because back in the Sins of Sinister and the Sons of X, we learned once you thank her, she then has control of your power. Which I am almost certain that the Mother will implement then and then later in the future issues, but for now she will continue to try to gain as many followers as possible. So in the meantime, she tasks Hope and Exodus to find a certain mutant she believes to be lost in the desert. So with Hope and Exodus more than willing to do the mother's bidding, Destiny remained the only person not willing to follow her blindly, for she states that it is a mistake to trust the mother because she feels that she is keeping things from them. 
And as for all the quote-unquote help the mother gave to destiny, it was just an elegant deception, a way to hide the truth in plain sight. So with that said, Exodus quickly comes to the mother's aid in saying how the mother has been a great help and is useful, unlike destiny in this current situation, which was a reference to how she had no visions since they were stranded in this mysterious place. But see, regardless of Destiny's visions being blocked, she still managed to make herself useful by warning Exodus and Hope about the mother. So with the warning out there, Hope tells Destiny that she is asking for a lot of trust without providing any evidence. Especially because up to this point, Destiny refuses to have anyone read her mind which in all honesty would make everything a lot easier. But this is when Destiny shuts that down and goes on to tell Hope how she knows things that would burn the skin from your bones and rend the skies asunder. And the reason why that is the case is because if Hope knows the full future, things may turn out differently for the good or the bad which is something Destiny doesn't want to risk. So with that out there, Exodus and Hope leave Destiny in charge as they leave out on their mission. So with two of our mutants racing off on their rescue mission, we jump over to Krakoa with Charles going up against Shaw and Selene. And during this battle, Shaw strategically pushed Charles towards Selene so the two telepaths could conduct psychic warfare. So as the battle proceeded to play out, Shaw made sure to provide cover fire for whenever Charles chose to slow down. So with the battle heating up and Charles being pushed to his limits, he decided to dig deep and reach out to Emma Frost in order to get an update on Shaw's situation so he could potentially outsmart the former mutant. So with the situation being as dire as it was, Emma quickly provided the information needed to put an end to this assault. So in a Hail Mary attempt, Charles let Shaw know that he could provide him a dozen Hellfire Club passwords to key accounts to help aid him in his future battles, but in return, Shaw must relent in his attack for the time being. So with the proposition on the table, Shaw quickly put his own self-interest first and opened fire on Selene as he acted like Charles took control of his body. So with Selene pacified for the time being, Shaw takes her away with the passwords in hand. But before he left, Shaw lets it be known that he would hate to think what Charles would be like if he truly unleashed himself, because Charles was always a massive manipulator and when it comes to his murderous tendency, even Selene squirmed when she saw the bodies. But see, strangely enough, Charles had no memories of killing anyone. So with that mystery out there, we skip over to Hope and Exodus closing in on the location provided by the mother, only to see Jean Grey down in the sand below muttering something about the phoenix. But see from Hope's perspective, Jean looked flat out delirious, which led her to believe they could be missing something. So just as Hope takes hold of Jean Grey's shoulder, out of nowhere Apocalypse appears right behind them, for Satan has arrived on the scene, and within seconds he takes a hold of Exodus and slams him on the floor and states how he always saw Exodus as extremely prideful among a list of sins. So with the battle on, Hope frantically searched high and low trying to figure out what the heck is going on. So with Exodus bringing up how he dreamed of this place a very long time ago, it jogged Hope's memory of what she stated earlier about Wolverine and Bishop. Because whatever is happening has to be connected to their mental fears. So with no other means of discovering the truth, Hope took a hold of Jean and dived into her mind, and within moments a burst of energy forced our hero to let go. Because within Jean's mind, Hope only found out it was on fire and burning extremely hot. In fact, it burned so hot that Hope struggled to find the proper words to describe it. But one thing she was able to get out of Jean was their location, which was none other than the White Hot Room. Which, if you didn't know, is the home of the Phoenix Force and the otherworldly material named Mysterium. So with that bombshell dropped, we jump over to the beaten and bruised Charles walking along the beachfront toward what looks like Sinister Slab. Because at this moment both Charles and Hope are experiencing their own revelation, a revelation that no one will survive, because the person they were is dead and gone forever. And in their place is perhaps someone stronger, perhaps no one at all. Because in the end, there is only relation itself, and revelations cannot be denied. And on the last page, we see Charles looking at a mirror with a red diamond on his head along with a sinister message that reads don't kill yourself, please. So with that said, this issue of Immortal X-Men comes to an end. Now when it comes to this comic, the two bombshell revelations at the end made the issue for me. Because with the mutants stranded in the White Hot Room, it would be only a matter of time for Emma and Tony to bring them home. Because in Invincible Iron Man, the two are currently planning on mining Mysterium, which is found only in that location. And as for the mysterious message left for Charles, that was a twist in itself, because I interpret that message to mean Sinister is within Charles's mind. 
which was one of the only things Charles, at this current point in time, fears the most. But anyway, down in the comment section below let me know your thoughts about this issue and what predictions you could have moving forward. So with that established, I hope you enjoyed this video and please don't forget to leave a like and a comment if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next review.